Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a look at Rum Run Deluxe Edition from Alex Coulomb. Now this is the winner of a mashup game design contest that was hosted by the Game Crafter. Now, in Rum Run Deluxe, this is a 1920s Prohibition era themed game for two to four players in which you are uh, working to uh, tap into distilleries hidden out in the forest and bring them back to the town center in order to score victory points. Now, this game is a mashup of two classic games, Dominoes and Mancala, that are put together to create the strategic game. Let's take a look at it, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a quick look at the components that come in Rum Run Deluxe. And the first thing that we get is a mounted game board here. It's set up like a grid, and this is where all the action is going to take place. Next, each player will have a supply of road tokens here, and they are uh, in four colors. Here we've got purple, red, orange, and blue. And each player will receive a set that is essentially a double six domino set, a full set of those, and there will be seven additional road tokens that can be used um, optionally. They're called forest folk, and they have a wild side on there. So if you see this asterisk right here, this can be used as a wild. So each player will have a full set of those. Uh, next, there's going to be a bunch of these wooden barrels over here that will be used during the game, and this is how we're going to be moving these from distilleries to the town center to score points. Uh, we do have uh, two pieces that make up the town center right here. This will be placed on the board. Uh, there's also a stack of these distillery cards here, and if you look, they have uh, a specific name and then there is uh, what their capacity is right here and then the different uh, spots where they can be tapped into for example here this one can be tapped into three different spaces and so these right here are how many barrels are going to come out of there each time that it's tapped so there's a whole bunch of these that come in the game they have a nice question mark on the back to give a little bit of mystery what's going on here in the game uh, there's also some things that will come in the deluxe edition here, which we have that does not come in the standard edition. And the first thing that we have here is we have some of these double-sided, uh, these are obstacles that you could place on the board, so now you'll have to build roads around them. So you've got, you've got uh, these that come in the game, so, they've, you know, so you've got one configuration on one side, and then you have like mountain ranges and stuff, so you have all sorts of goodies there. Uh, there's also going to be some objectives that you can use during the game. So, um, you know, if you draw something at the beginning of the game, maybe you want to, uh, if you can meet this particular objective, you'll gain an additional barrel as a reward. And there are also event cards that come in the game that every time that you tap a distillery, we could have some really cool events that will happen that kind of adds to the gameplay. And then finally, there's a bunch of these fog tokens that can be placed out. So you can have fog come in and uh, interfere with the game. And there could be good things or bad things when you go through the fog. You could have something good, like uncovering a, a paved road that's always permanent that nobody can get rid of, that, that will benefit you in moving some things around. Or you can come across a trap, which is going to essentially make you lose your turn. So there's all sorts of uh, interesting things that are in this fog. So uh, there's also a nice full color rule book that comes with the game that explains how to play the game. There's some additional uh, fun puzzles in here just to make you, uh, you know, you can practice on how you're going to be doing your road building here. And then finally, it comes with a couple of extra documents here. The first one is a quick start guide to play your first game, or if you're going to play a full game here, we'll tell you uh, everything that you need to do there. And then also you have this nice reference guide here that uh, it's a flow chart that you can use on your turn if you're going to be either doing road building or if you're going to be caravanning, which are the two options that you have during the gameplay. So this is all the stuff that comes in this game. Let me get it set up and I'll show you how to play. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've set up this game here and I'm gonna do uh, a partial playthrough here to show you how the different mechanics work for this game. So I have it set up for two players and what I did was I sorted out all of the uh, road tokens here by values here and so if you look at them for example here is a double six so it's look like a domino 
and all of the doubles are a crossroad here so you can actually change the direction otherwise if you were to uh, run for example here this is a five six the road is only straight so uh, so these are going to play into effect with how you build your roads uh, what I did here too is I set up the game to kind of show you as many of the different um, options that you can play in this deluxe game so there's a lot of stuff that you can do first of all um, one of the things that we can do is we can choose to play with the distillery cards either revealed or they can be hidden until you uh, discover them. So if you put a road token adjacent to this, we would be able to flip it over and then you'd be able to see where the um, entrance is to tap it. Now let me show you what these distillery cards look like up close. For example, here this is one that's not in play and this is the uh, Fort Firewater. And uh, the first thing that I wanna show you is that down here, uh, this little arrow will show you that you can tap it from this side here. So this intersection right here, you'll be able to um, bring in a road token here and tap it there. Or on the second one here, you have got two different abilities to tap it. One from the bottom here and then one coming in from the side. You'll be able to place a token right there as well. And then um, you have this artwork here of the the uh, distillery and then if you notice up at the top here there's three values four two and one and what's going to happen is when you tap these the first time that a player will tap into either one of these there will be four barrels of uh, liquor waiting for them and that will immediately get transferred to their road and you can start caravanning it back to the town center the second person to tap will get two and then finally the third person third player to tap this will uh, get one barrel so you can work it back and forth. So typically the first person to get there is going to get the most. So that's how these cards are laid out and they just match up on the grid. You just line them up how, uh, however you want to on the board and how they fit. Next we have the town center which I just placed here in the board and you can uh, change this however you want to uh, make this board you can uh, do that. And another thing that I did was I placed some obstacles that are on the board. So now um, we'll have to build roads around them. So it's going to be a little bit more uh, difficult and challenging to build the roads. And we do have, you know, some of the, uh, some of the obstacles can be L-shaped like this or just uh, straight rectangular here. So the nice thing is they're double-sided. So you've got plenty of options for that too. I took some of the, uh, fog tokens and I mix them up and I just place them randomly on the board and so if we build a road token uh, when we get to this we'll flip it over and we'll see what happens could be good could be bad and then I placed out the objectives over here on the uh, side of the board and some of these uh, will be if you're like the first person to do something uh, you will gain one of these objectives and it will be like kind of permanent as a reward and there's other ones that uh, kind of like Settlers of Catan, uh, these objective rewards can move around. And then we're going to play uh, this game here. We'll uh, be working to get barrels back to the town center, so this will give you additional ones. And when you reach a certain number of uh, barrels, then the win condition is triggered. Uh, one of the other things, too, is I set up and shuffled the event deck here and it's off to the side and the, each uh, time that we tap a distillery we will read uh, an event card and we will resolve it. If it's not something that can affect us immediately we'll just discard it and we'll draw another one and we'll resolve it. So now that we've got the, the gameplay I just want to give you a, a, an idea of how this is going to play. Essentially first um, you'll have all of these road tokens here that look like dominoes. So they, you know, so I have them all in rank here from a double six all the way down to the double one through one six. And then I do have the optional forest folk road tokens in here too that can be wild. So essentially what somebody's going to do is they're going to take, each player will take one of their tokens and they will um, place it face down in there and they will place it anywhere on the... Uh, on the city around the city center at one of the intersections and so what we will do is I'll place this here and then they will reveal them and the player who placed the lower value will end up being the first player 
So the red player will be going first. And how this is oriented is uh, very important because the way that you're going to play these now is you're going to have to line them up just as if you were playing a uh, set of dominoes. So now I have a three right here. So now what I need to do is I need to, I will have to play another card here that uh, will match up. So just like dominoes. So all of the road building is going to be just like you're playing with dominoes. So for example here I may play this 3-5 now and I may play this 5-2 on my turn and as I'm building this road here I want to try to be able to reach these distilleries and be able to tap them. Now I've, over, I've come across this uh, fog token here when I place this down um, and this is what's going to happen. Each player will take one one turn. I'm just kind of showing you um, how this works for the red player. So I'm going to turn this over and now I automatically find an abandoned barrel that is uh, in this road. So that's been a re really good thing. So what I'm going to do is I will uh, take this bear and I'll place this off to the side and I will take a wooden barrel that's, that's uh, over in the reserve and I will now place it on here. So now um, I have a barrel here which I can start uh, working its way back towards uh, scoring. So um, anyway, so you're going to continue doing this road building here, this player. Let me get it caught up so I can actually show you how real turns work. Uh, this one here, I think what I'm going to do is I need to change direction over here. And so in order to change direction, you play a double domino. And if you know it, it's a crossroad here. So it'll be able to change direction. So what I will do is I'll place this right here. And now um, <clears throat> this is going to give me the ability to change directions. So once I play one, I can play an additional uh, road token. So let's say I want to get over towards here. So I think what I'm going to do is I will place like a 5-4 over here. And so that's going to be my turn there. And so we're going to continue building these roads. Now, uh, eventually what's going to happen is uh, if I build off of this side here, I can, um, they're considered like loose roads or here maybe I didn't want to go this way on my turn. Instead of placing a, uh, placing a road token, I would be able to take these ones back and put them in my reserve and use them somewhere else. So you're going to see roads uh, building and then they're going to be removed and also what you can do is eventually what will happen is if you're going to um, place some things here you can break a road so let's say for example a little bit further down the, the game here I was uh, I happen to have a road here um, and I wanted to <clears throat> go through here I could break their road and essentially what I need to do is I need to play a uh, token that has a higher value than this one here. So a total number of pips. So this is a four, five, so this is a nine. So right now I have to play at least, I would have to play a four, six if I had it in there. So if I played the four, six, what I would do is essentially um, just break their road and so now he's going to have to do something in an attempt to uh, rebuild the road in order to uh, get back to his town center from the distillery. If he happened to have had a barrel on here I would have then stole it from him. So it's a little bit of the road building, uh, road building mechanics here. Uh, let me show you uh, as we were progressing along here now um, I want to show you how it, what it looks like when we tap into a distillery. So I'm going to play this double two over here and I'll go with a two four. And so as you can see, I'm building my road here. And if there's more players here, there's going to obviously be a lot more action going on. And we could be breaking roads and trying to stop everybody from, uh, from doing things. Let me lay this up here. So we have another... Um, and then I have to look and see what I have available here. So I have a 4-2. I need to get one here, and then eventually I'm going to have to tap into this. So uh, let me look and see what doubles I have here. And I think I'm going to play a... Um, I want to play a 4-6 if I have it out here. Where's my 4-6? Oh, here we go, 4-6. So I'm going to place this right here. And then eventually what I would be able to do is place this 6-6 uh, six, six on a subsequent turn here. And now I have reached this 
particular distillery. I'm the first one to tap it, so two things are going to happen. Number one, these two barrels will go on here, and then I would flip an event card here which says, uh, ransack the shack, it says that the next player to tap Old Sauce Shack receives its entire current supply plus two extra barrels from the game reserve. So if somebody gets this, they're gonna, you know, they'll have a whole lot of barrels that they'll have to work back. So, uh, and, and it will be worth a lot of points. So I don't know if we have Old Sauce Shack in here, so it doesn't really resolve immediately. So what I'll do is discard it and we'll pull another one up and says, uh, here, um, no honor among thieves. The hired gun you took on to help safeguard your barrels it turns double agent and diverts the shipment. His crew is waiting just around the bend, hoping to benefit from your hard-earned bounty. And it says, choose two roads running side by side, at least one of which must have barrels on it. You move up to three barrels from one, one road to the adjacent road tokens. Either road may belong to any player, including yourself. So you do have the ability to kind of start stealing some things. But uh, anyways, so I've showed you a little bit about how the road building goes, and that is, the dom that is a domino mechanic. And now uh, caravanning, what is going to happen is it's going to be just like you're playing Mancala. So on my turn, if I decide I want to start caravanning, what I would do then is I would pick these up, and I would place them one here and one here. And eventually what I'm going to have to do is I'd pick this one up and place this here, and then I would pick on another turn I'd place this here, and here, then I'd place, I could pick this one up here and go one, two, and then uh, a next turn I could move this one here. Uh, so each turn is just like Mancala. You pick something up and you move them. So uh, this one here, maybe I'll move this and move it here. And then on my turn here, I'll place one here. And eventually I bring this back to the town center where I will score this barrel. So this is gonna happen over a number of turns. And then essentially what will happen on this, once I score, I will get an additional action. So right here, uh, I will caravan one here. And then uh, since I had two of them here, this one is going to overshoot and will go on to uh, another road of my choosing. And so now this is now going to become one that my opponent will have, but this one will score here too. So you have this Mancala element that you're going to be using to, um, to uh, move these barrels and get them to the town center. You've got domino effect that's going to be showing how the roads are built. Eventually uh, on one of these things here where I have got a crossroad here, uh, what I can do is now on another turn since I've tapped this, this is kind of considered loose. I'd be able to pull some of these back and put them in my reserve and maybe change direction now and start going this way. Uh, and, and as soon as I would get close to this, I would flip this over and reveal what it is. And uh, just so happens that this is the old sauce shack. If this had been shown before, uh, that first card would have been in play. And so what would happen is once we reveal that, then I will seed it with the number of barrels and we'll continue moving around trying to uh, win some things. But once you move some of these back, they can go back into your supply so that you can move them around. So you really have to manage your hand. Also, when I scored, the, um, when I scored my barrels here, um, if I happen to have been the first person to score, I would have been able to uh, complete this objective and I would re uh, receive another barrel as a reward. So there's there's a lot of stuff that's going on in here. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of taste because uh, for time's sake it would take a, a very very long time to show you how to play this game but this is essentially how you play Rum Run Deluxe. So the main thing I want to focus on is that you have uh, domino, uh, f domino uh, placement for movement for building roads, and then you have uh, a Mancala element for moving your barrels back to the town center. You can um, use higher powered dominoes to break roads, and you have a bunch of extra goodies that are out here, uh, obstacles to build around. We have objectives to meet. We have events that can happen, and uh, you have this variable game board. So lots and lots and lots and lots of things going on. So here's a bit about Rum Run Deluxe. Okay, let's talk about this deluxe edition of Rum Run here. And first of all, congratulations to Alex for designing this game and winning the mashup game design contest that was hosted by the Game Crafter. Did a very, very excellent job of taking two classic games, Double Six Dominoes and Mancala, 
putting them together to create this strategic prohibition era game. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is the uh, the game mechanics themselves, because when I showed the overview of the the uh, gameplay, I just showed you how to play the game a little bit. Uh, I showed you the basic mechanics of building roads, um, how a road can be broken, and then once a uh, distillery has been tapped, how, how the uh, barrels are transferred over your road, and then the caravanning process of bringing them back uh, to the town center. But there is a, there's a lot more that's going on, because the, if you have more players playing, uh, they can come along and essentially try to intercept and break your road and steal your barrels, and so it gets to be uh, a pretty cutthroat game when you have four players on the board. And so for sake of time, I just wanted to show that the elements of how to play the game, and I wanted to spend more time focusing on the, uh, the deluxe edition of the game and what it brings uh, to enhance the gameplay. You have two solid game mechanics of playing essentially dominoes for your road building and uh, using your double dominoes in order to change directions. I thought that's a really, really great uh, idea and concept of playing the game. And then also the Mancala element of caravanning the barrels back because it just you just kind of get that theme of, you, you know, the theme comes through of it being like Prohibition era. You're out in the woods trying to move these barrels back and so it just kind of uh, just kind of lends to that feel. So you have so you have those those things that are that are going on. But in the deluxe edition, you put obstacles out there. Now you're going to have to manage your hand more because you're going to really have to uh, be aware of what you have in your uh, your supply of road tokens because you need to be able to have the proper resources to change the directions at the right time and to be able to uh, plan to go around these obstacles. You also have those fog tokens, which kind of add a whole extra element to the game because you don't know what's underneath there and sometimes it's going to be good sometimes it's going to be bad so you never know uh, what's going to happen uh, you know in the little demonstration we happened to flip one over and we were rewarded with an extra barrel so that was a good thing but we could have hit a trap or got stuck in the mud uh, those would have been bad things for us so you never know what um, is going to be underneath those fog tokens you also have the uh, objectives that are out there and so you have things if you're the first one to do something you can get a reward or you have those floating objectives that are around that kind of like when you're playing settlers of Catan, like the longest road or the largest army that uh, that as soon as somebody else passes it uh, you up they could take it away from you and so uh, you may have been thought you were close to winning the game and then all of a sudden they take it away from you now it's going to have to you're gonna to have to work harder to uh, get caught back up or somebody could steal it from you and they could win the game so you have those objectives play a major factor in in the game and so uh, and then you also have the event cards that happen every time you tap a distillery so you have all these different elements that, that really really bring this game to life in it and it just makes it makes it so much better and it's worth the investment to buy the deluxe edition over the standard edition because you don't get all of that other stuff so uh, so it just really really makes the the game uh, that much better having all those extra elements. Now, specifically in the gameplay, you uh, have major, major elements in here that you're going to have to uh, that you're going to have to exercise. Biggest one is uh, essentially your hand management. How you're going to manage your uh, your road tokens so that you have them available, and how you're going to uh, to be able to use them to change directions and tap into certain things. And then the other one is going to be your resource management, essentially your resources are your road tokens as well. They're not in your hand, but they're on the board. And now you have the decision of if they're considered loose, where they're only connected on one side, um, of when to pull those back and put those into your supply, or if you're going to continue to uh, maybe build off into another direction. So there's, a, there's, a, there's those elements that are in there, so you really have to pay attention to what's going on with that and how you're going to have to manage your resources. Now, specifically looking at this game from a family perspective, uh, even though the theme is essentially Prohibition era and you're transporting alcohol, that doesn't really come through on this and you're not going to be playing a game like this with uh, younger players. This is going to be something where you're going to be playing with teenagers and, on, on up because there's because it is, it is difficult to play, especially with multiple players, because you have a lot of cutthroat activity going on of breaking roads, stealing barrels, and, and things like that. So, 
But looking at this game from a family perspective, this really, really brings out two classic games that you grew up playing and you put them together and it just, it just, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I've played, uh, I've played dominoes before, um, you know, I've played it with my kids. I've played Mancala with my kids. We have a Mancala set that's almost always out because I've got a niece that really loves to play that, pick those up and move the little stones around. But you take those two elements, you put it together and it brings about a game that you're going to have to really exercise your hand management and resource management skills. So you're looking at that, you're looking at what you have and planning uh, and making all of your moves working with what you have. It's a really, really strong skill that is developed in this game. Uh, this game is, is um, outstanding in its uh, gameplay and especially if you're into more of those, ab like an abstract type game. If you like dominoes and or if you like Mancala by themselves, this game takes it uh, and just basically puts it on steroids, puts a cool theme on it, and gives you a, uh, gives you a nice game that you'd be able to bring out and uh, share with your friends. Uh, there's so many cool things about the game that you can make it as easy as you want, as difficult as you want. You can play with the distilleries revealed or hidden. Uh, you can configure the board any way you want so that it offers a ton of replayability and you can customize the game to play how you want to and fit your particular mood. And so I think that those those elements there make the game worthy of recommending and make it worth the investment because it's not something that you're going to get tired of because you can always change it around. And there's enough going on in there that you could create your own house rules with too. And so you can get a lot out of this game. So again, this is Rum Run Deluxe by Alex Coulomb. And I will have the uh, ordering information in the video description below if you'd like to get a copy. Okay, and that's it for now, and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table.